Our surface there. You've got a foot and a half of snowfall that's fallen at Bear Valley over the past week, too. 57 trails on a packed powder surface. And coming up on Saturday, it's a freestyle competition. Sugar Bowl right now with almost three feet of snowfall over the past week. They've got 75 trails for you to ski and ride down. Abundant sunshine and warmer than average temperatures at Alpine Meadows. Two feet of snowfall over the past week there. They've got 75 runs. 100% of the train is open for you at Sunrise Park in Arizona. And the Snow Bowl in Arizona as well with up to almost 40 trails. More at snowcountry.com. I'm Dave Collins on KCAA, 1050 AM, the all-new 106.5 FM, the stations that leave no listener behind. For more local radio every day, tune in to KCAA Loma Linda. When I wake up well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk... Good morning, good morning. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. It is a beautiful, beautiful day today, as always. Yes. And, it's uh, warming up a little bit, too. It is warming a little up a little bit. You know, I'm where I guess... You know, it's not even March yet, but we have a spring now. Did, did that groundhog see his shadow? What? Had... No, 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 no. He didn't. It said, but he there was not going to be six weeks of of winter. He did not see his shadow. Okay. Uh, however, uh, you know, I don't know. A few three weeks left of winter would have been nice. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, a couple days here. A couple there. days here and there. You know, you know. I I still am bummed, and we've talked about this that there wasn't the big El Nino. Yeah. You know, we got some rain. But well, Northern California seemed to got hit. They did. Hard, they got hit really hard. We got robbed. We got gypped. <laughs> I don't know, Aaron. So this this Apple story continues, um, uh, and most people are are standing on the side of Apple. Um, now I understand that the um, that the victims' uh, families and the people who were you know who weren't killed, but you know the victims, they were victims. Uh, they are filing briefs in support of. Uh, the government's actions, but yeah. you know, I personally think and you and I differ on this. You know, if they open this box, if they if they give the the U.S. government this access, then how mm-hmm. can they deny any other government this access? How you know? And once it's out there, it's out there. You've created a backdoor into every iPhone ever, and that's not okay. Yeah, you don't. You, I I disagree. I mean, I think that that. You know, uh, the government has a right to uh, go after this information, especially in a case of terrorism. Um, and I think that you know, this is. Th- I know that you don't that you don't want them going after our stuff, but our stuff's all out there. I mean, I, I, I've said this; we've had this argument. I'll tell you one if of the things. If it were all out there, then they could get into this phone. I, I mean, that's a, that's, the, a, that's they a want, circular argument. Well, they want the specific information, I believe. Um, for who they were contacting and and some other things that, that that they can't get through some other other ways, they want to get the specific messages. Okay, and things but like we're that. talking about a back door into your phone that would mm-hmm. allow people to get access to your banking information. I mean, your actual banking information, mm-hmm. your actual social security number. Mm-hmm. They could wreck your life financially, and and you the know, government already has all that. Yeah, but it's not just our government we have to be worried about. Once mm-hmm. this is created, it's created. Yeah, I, again, I'm not. I'm not so worried. Like I said, I believe all of our information's out there. That if they, if if you if, believe that somebody could pull money out of, our, out of our bank account electronically, and it's no big deal. I believe that it's happened. I believe that our bank, when we were first married, B of A, they they the bank took our money out of our bank account and froze it for a month as a person went on vacation, and we had to deal with that. People, you know, and it was a mistake, and they fixed it eventually. But yes. I, the businesses can do it. Individuals, uh, yeah. You, what we need is safeguards to protect us when the bad stuff happens. Okay, so these are okay. So we have to wait till we're victimized to have safeguards. No, no. I think that we need to make sure there are safeguards in place. That we we but, have safeguards but, but, in place. But these guys are not victims. These are terrorists, and and they don't they don't they don't get but, protected. But once you create the technology, this isn't about a narrow case. Once you create that technology, it's there. And you believe that that anybody at Apple who would know how to do this is always going to work at Apple is never going to be able you'll never be able to bribe them you'll never be able to get them to cor- to commit um, espionage corporate espionage you believe that they will have it locked down and it'll be safe. I believe we're living in a different world and I don't believe that you can ever fully protect your information. It's out there. 
What do you think, people, Brandon? People are digging through it all well, the time. Well, okay. And if you can't protect your information, then the government needs to find another way in that phone. I mean, if it's out there and it's already done and, you know, blah, 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 why are we worried about it? Then then why are we worried about it? Apple can, can continue on and the government has that information anyway. The government has a right and a necessity to get this information to keep us safe from terrorists. I think this is, this is a, a good and reasonable use of power. Now, I'll tell you what I think is interesting about this for me, okay, is the political spin on this. You know, uh, what's interesting is you see a bunch of, of uh, Republican candidates who come out and bashed Apple and said, you know, that we need to go after these terrorists, which actually is, is shocker, the Obama government position. Right. Right. That's I mean, that's what this is. This is the Obama FBI that is going after this. And, the, and it's it's the lefties. Right. It's the Democrats primarily. OK. That are the ones saying, no, no, no we've got to protect our privacy. And, and I find this one of those really interesting sort of political switcheroos. Right. Because traditionally, a Republican Party has been the party of free speech and protecting and, you know, this kind of stuff. And I just think this is really an interesting, interesting switch. And nobody's talking about the political aspects of this. Um, but, yeah, I, my personal opinion, I know I'm probably in the minority on this, but all of our information is out there. And I think, you know, um, uh, millennials, like I said, particularly give their information out freely and have no sort of boundaries about what they share or don't share. And I believe that the, the values and the moral, the, the constructs that we have about what's fair game is, is shifting. Well, it's interesting because younger Americans actually are more likely than older ones to side with Apple. Sixty four percent of millennials and, uh, uh, you know, people actually under uh, 39 years old or that would be millennials stand with Apple. And I asked earlier, Brandon, and then I cut him off. So, Brandon, what do you think? So um, I I do believe if you could if it was possible to limit it to this one iPhone, if you could make sure it was only this iPhone, if you could make sure it was only once, then it would be fine. But there's no way to ensure it. There's and no way because of that. Like, because of that, the only way I could see it happening is if you could make this tool device specific and keep it within Apple and destroy how it was made. Because the people that have the knowledge of how to make it already possess that knowledge. So it's not like those people look like, it's not like once this tool is created, like, oh, these people have that knowledge now. They already possess that knowledge. It's already inside of them. It's already a tool that they're capable of making if they're capable of making it. Well, I'm not comfortable with it at all. I Neither think we am find I. another way. If, if there's a way to crack this singular phone, then I'm fine but with it. But there's not. I mean, once you've cracked the phone, you've cracked the phone. Yeah. And that's why I think, like, if it has to be done, it has to be done within Apple. The FBI cannot do it at all. And... The only thing I'm afraid of, even with that, is that sets a precedent that Apple is able to do this. Right. And so and what happens if China wants in? Well, n- Or Iran wants in? Not only that, but for every single case, Apple has to do it now. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, terrorism. It's, you know, any case that they can get a subpoena for. Which, I mean, some judges hand out like candy. It's just, you know, you have to hand that over now. I know that there are other cases uh, in that are being that, that are going through the courts. I think there are four other where they have asked uh, Apple to do basically the same thing. They've just, you know, they're, I, I, the government is using this particular case to uh, as a bludgeon to get what they've been wanting for a long time. Well, and the Wall Street Journal reported that um, there are twelve other cases that aren't even related to national security in any way that are asking for the same thing. Yep. If there was a drug dealer in my neighborhood and they got his cell phone and they wanted to get into it so they could figure out who his networks were and, and to help shut down the drug dealing in my neighborhood, I would be in support of them being able to get that information out of the phone. And I don't want drug dealers going and buying Apple phones because they know. But Android the government... phones are the same thing. No, no, but my point is is that, you know, we, we allow our government to do these kinds of to do searches, right? They can go into my house and search my house. They, that's allowed. We give search warrants like that all the time. I believe it's a per- perfectly reasonable legal thing for them to give a search warrant to go look to see what's on someone's phone if they have probable cause. And, and we use these tools to help clean out crime and violence and all kinds of stuff that's going on in our community. I don't see this as being any different. I really don't. I don't. I live in my house, and I don't feel like I'm under 
particular strain that the government's going to come walking into my house someday. It's, why am I? Why would I be worried if they're going to get the information on my phone? I'm not. But you're I'm assuming not. that it would only be in the government's hands, that only the government would have the power to get in. So we'll leave it at that. At 6.15, it's time for a break. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we have Brandon McCormick in the booth. We are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA, AM 1050 and FM 106.5. We'll be right back. KCAA, where every day is a great day. Hi, this is Steve Allador from Rancho Financial with the Mortgage Minute. This may be the perfect time to move forward with a new purchase. The feds have not yet increased short-term rates. When they do, we expect both rates and property values to increase. Today, you have an opportunity to qualify for a lower payment and more home than potentially even just a few months down the road. If you have VA eligibility, we can do up to 100% financing. We have loans with as little as 3.5% down, less than 20% down without mortgage insurance. Turned down because you can't qualify with your tax returns? We have special programs that we can use your assets to qualify you, and we have just come out with a bank statement program. If you can't qualify with your tax returns, but can show income through your bank statements, we might have a loan program just for you. There are many possible options that can make a huge difference in your monthly payments. That's why you need a loan financial planner. Give me a call, Steve Allador, at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070, or go to loanfinancialplanner.com. A Touch of Brass, a distributor of kitchen and bath fixtures, is seeking an internal auditor for its Chino, California office. Job duties include managing company financial documents, developing company budgets and protocols to reduce waste, and analyzing and reviewing business trends to forecast future revenues and expenses. A bachelor's degree in accounting is required. Mail resumes to HR 13832 Magnolia Avenue, Chino, California, 91710. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company has been serving the greater Inland Empire for over 60 years. For all of your printing needs, from full-color printing to high-speed copying and everything in between, go to Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. Their staff is committed to your total satisfaction. Great service isn't just lip service at Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company. It's the way they do business year after year. Having trouble finding drafting supplies? Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company still carries a complete selection. Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company is rated high in customer satisfaction by Value Star, an independent rating company. For all of your personal or business printing, call Redlands Blueprint and Commercial Printing Company at 909-792-3478. That's 792-3478 or visit them on New York Street in Redlands off the I-10 and the Crosstown Freeway. Looking for a great cover band or one of the world's top tribute artists for your corporate event? You've come to the right place. David Levin Entertainment, Southern California's premier entertainment company serving the Inland Empire, Orange County, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Call us at 650-282-5009 or visit us online and watch the videos at davidlevinent.com. That's davidlevinent.com. Oh, no. Out of toner. Off to the store to buy another expensive cartridge. Hello, Dave. It's your printer. What? Hey, I just want to go out and buy some toner. Dave, I can't let you do that. Wait a minute. You're my printer. Printers can't talk. Why are you buying expensive toner, Dave? I buy it at the office supply store. Dave, your company expects you to save them money. How can I do that? By going to the source, Dave. When you need toner, you have to go to the source, DiscountOfficeSource.com. DiscountOfficeSource.com. Here it is. You're right. Unbeatable prices. Fast and free delivery. Now, Dave, order all your ink and toner supplies from DiscountOfficeSource.com and start saving money. Unbeatable prices with fast and free delivery. For all your ink and toner supplies, make sure you go to the source, DiscountOfficeSource.com and start saving money. Do you even like your company website? Most of those that I've spoken to don't, especially if they bought it from some yellow page rep or one of those big do-it-yourself web companies. I'm Greg Hill of FlipYour.Website. How about a complete redesign at only $200? You heard correctly, starting at only $200, you can have a great-looking website with 
all the latest features. Your team will have complete control of your new website with the best content management system available. If needed, we will rewrite your content to make it search engine friendly. We offer inexpensive solutions for e-commerce, blogs, online chat like we have, even a CRM and more. We are SEO experts. We can drive traffic to your website and get you customers through the search engines and social media. So come online and chat with us anytime. Even our domain name is cutting edge, www.flipyour.website, not .com, flipyour.website. Again, flipyour.website. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda at 106.5 FM, K293CF, Moreno Valley. We are on the brink, the morning show on KTAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. There was a horrific accident in Ontario yesterday that uh, that we need to talk about. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, it was during a test drive. Uh, a test drive turned tragic when a red Corvette crashed, crashed, killing a car salesman and prompting the driver's arrest. This is according to the Ontario police. Whoa. The, the wreck was reported at 12.46 p.m. on Tuesday, which was yesterday, along Mercedes Drive, um, south of Concourse Street in Ontario, uh-huh. at the Ontario Auto Center, yeah. uh, northeast of the Ontario International Airport. Um, uh, oh, no, that was... They were from the Ontario yeah. Auto Center. You know yeah. where Co- Concourse is, just one yeah, block yeah, yeah, north yeah. of yeah. Inland Empire Boulevard. So the Cor- Corvette was for sale, and the driver was on a test drive with the uh, CarMax sales associate in the passenger seat. Uh, this is according to Sergeant Jeff Higby in a writ- written statement. Witnesses stated that the car was being driven at a high speed, and the driver lost control. Wow. The vet hit a tree. Um, the salesman was a 43-year-old Montclair man. He died at San Antonio Community Hospital. The driver is a 28-year-old resident of the Bay Area community of Union City. Uh, Alex Mark Dimitra was arrested for investigation of vehicular manslaughter and driving under the influence of drugs, jail records show. His bail is set at $100,000. And i got to be honest with you, charge this man with murder. Yeah. Wow. Wow, right? I mean, this is, like, bizarre. I mean, who goes into a car dealership when you're high on something, right, and does that? I mean, that's just, it's, wow. And this poor man, you know, 43 years old, he's just at work. Yeah. You know, and test drives, people tend to, to drive pretty gingerly in test drives. Well, or just normally. You don't, yeah. you know, you don't want to do anything that you might risk uh, ruining this car, wrecking this car that you that you haven't bought yet. Yeah, and if you want to drive fast in a high end sports car, um, sometimes these these uh, kinds of dealerships will have special deals where they actually go out to the racetrack and let you do that. Yeah, and the and California I, Speedway is just in Fontana, folks. Yeah, and I, and I say that because uh, my brother uh, Todd, who's on the show with us, um, uh, years ago when he had just bought a, I'm trying to think which car he had just bought. Um, he had just bought a really nice car. And the dealership then said and they invited him out for a special test drive of the newest models. Maybe that was the Infinity. Maybe it was the Infinity. And we went out to the Pomona Fairgrounds, and we had a professional driver who took us out on the course first. And, I mean, we were zipping around that course in the car with a professional driver, and then both Todd and I got to take a chance driving the car. But that was fun. It was really fun. A little scary, too. <laughs> but, but, you know, it was done in... An environment that was safe. There were no other cars on the road. It was a wide open space. You know, they had the the course clearly marked, and we went through it first with a professional who kind of talked to us about how the car handles in the certain situations and what to do. You know, that very different situation. What this guy did, it, it, you're right. It's murder. It's I mean, murder. I, I really hope that they go at throw the the whole book at him. This guy is is you know maybe scum. not first degree murder. There was an intent to murder, but second degree. I mean, you know, if you were to if you had a loaded gun. Yeah. And uh, you you shot somebody, but it didn't kill him. That would be attempted murder. Yeah. Um, if you had a loaded gun and it accident and you were messing with it and it actually accidentally went off, you could be tried for murder. Yeah. Uh, second degree, because you know, a car is can be a lo- it can be a it's weapon. It's a lethal weapon. It's yeah. a lethal weapon if you want to make it that way. Yeah. You know, I just my heart goes out to and, his and family it, and everybody who works with him and everybody who knows him. Yeah. So many people are going to be affected by this. Yeah. I, and you got to wonder, you got to wonder, I mean, what this guy's last minutes were like, you know, is he in the car ha- having concerns about this, this kid that's driving, you know, and as he gets to pick up the speed and, and scared or, to death. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, it's just it's just awful. And so wow. I, I don't like to be the bearer of bad news, but wow. um, I just because this was this was in our backyard. I just want to make sure that that people know what happened. And I'm you know, we'll be following this as more information yeah. comes out. Well, you know, uh, we I recently took our daughter for some test drives and talk about gingerly driving. I mean, you know, <laughs> she's in a brand new car and, you know, we're put- putting down the street and she's double checking everything and, you know, new blind spots and new controls. Right. And, you know, I mean. Very different kind of driving. Very different. Yeah. yeah, because she's got a brain in her head and she wasn't high. Yes. So speaking of high, Taco Bell uh-huh. has suddenly become one of the healthiest fast food chains. Ooh. And, and everybody looks at, Brandon looks at me like, what? Yeah, it, it has. Because um, they used to be the worst. They used the to worst. be the worst of the worst. So, but, you know, can a, ch- can a chain best known for fried cheesy Doritos filled offerings um, can now I have Homer in my head? Mmm, <laughs> Doritos. That's All funny. right. Uh, also, could be a go-to for healthy food, according to Taco Bell's dietitian and product developer Missy Nelson. The fast food chain. They're all, they already are. Nelson began working at Taco Bell more than four years ago. During that time, Taco Bell has pledged to cut artificial ingredients, switch to cage-free eggs. Um, uh, the brand has debuted lower cali- their lower-calorie cal- fresco menu, the high-protein cantina menu, and a vegetarian menu certified by the American Vegetarian Association. And across all offerings, there's been a 15 cent, 15 cent, 15 percent reduction in sodium. Now you're talking. Yes. Now, they also have the Dor- Doritos Locos Tacos and the cheesy quesalupa. The, the, the waffle taco. The wa- a waffle, they have a waffle taco. They have a waffle taco. Welcome to the breakfast menu, Aaron. <laughs> Clearly, nutrition-savvy advances can coexist with products that few would put on their diet plans. In my own personal experience, after a week of eating nothing but fast food, Taco Bell was one of the best chains around to find healthy options. This is according to uh, Kate Taylor from the Business Insider. Um, From top to bottom, uh, Taco Bell, especially in its online and mobile ordering platforms, has been subtly organized to promote this sense of choice, whether that be the choice to pig out or the the choice to eat healthy. So you have your healthy food and you have your drunk food. Yes. (laughs) So, you know, this is really, I think, a response to when Taco Bell was caught using, you know, meat substitutes. Yes. What was that stuff called? That goo that they were putting in there? Yeah, I don't even remember what it was called, but I know what you're talking. They got sued because they They, couldn't, questioning whether they could legally call their beef beef. Yeah, because it wasn't. It was some chemical concoction that that had a, a meat-like flavor and consistency, but it really wasn't meat at no. all. No. And they, yeah. And, and so, you know, they got hammered. Their, their sales dropped precipitously, and now they've been clawing their way back. I actually liked, what was it, a year or so ago when they did the thing with the Top Chef uh, that, that oh, woman. yes. Yes, they did. I don't remember her name. Yeah, but they they really did a great ad, and they showed her using all these fresh ingredients to make this, you know, new kind of taco-type salad. I actually think there's a picture of it. There is this. a picture. It's got black beans and, yeah. white, and rice and pico de gallo and guacamole. And yeah, and it, it was really looked like a really well-made, delicious salad. Um, and so I think that they began to turn that corner, right? And to see that they've now really began to address some really specific types of health needs right? Uh, people who are on that high protein diet, we've got a menu for you. Right. You know, people that, that want something that's a little more on the fruits and vegetable side. We've got some, you know, for the vegetarians. I mean, they've, you know, I just, I like that. I, that speaks to me. So all you college kids out there, the guy's going to go out and get the Doritos, whatever taco, and the girl's going to get the, get the, the black bean and rice bowl with the chicken on top or the, you know. I'm looking at a picture of the waffle taco. The breakfast wa- waffle taco. Oh, my God. It's got syrup all over it. It does. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> So no, no, we're no. not going to Taco Bell for breakfast. I actually think I, I, they still aren't. I don't know that they're very gluten friendly. So, yeah. you know, if, if, you're, if you can't enjoy gluten like I cannot, um, it's still, I don't think, we're, a safe place to eat. I know we just have a second left here, but we are actually going to go out for breakfast this morning. We're going to try a new place in Colton, House of Eggs. I'm very excited to go to a place called House of Eggs. <laughs> Check it out. Tobin wants an omelet. So, I do. <laughs> We're talking about like how Taco Bell can be healthy, and I just think it's funny. I and mean, I'm I'm not saying they can't be, but I just think it's funny if you go to Taco Bell's website, the first thing you see is because cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, they know their market, or you know, <laughs> are you're their market? Yeah, you know, yes. it's it's uh it's young people, mostly male. Uh, you're their market. But, you know, I, I think that they're trying to turn that around, and good for them. Good for them. Good for them. So it is 6.30. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. We'll be right back. 
Wishing for a little bit more information? You'll get it all here on KCAA Radio. Here's the latest. I'm Mark Woolsey. Another big night for Donald Trump as he scores a win in the Nevada caucuses. We won the evangelicals. We won with young. We won with old. We won with highly educated. We won with poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. Trump came in nearly 20 percent ahead of his nearest competitor, Senator Marco Rubio. Ted Cruz finished in third place in a close race behind Rubio. Reporter Joe Gomez. Cruz telling supporters he's working hard and looking ahead. One week from today, the most delegates that are awarded on a single day will be awarded next Tuesday. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton saying she's not bothered by the email scandal that during a CNN town hall meeting in South Carolina. You know, the facts are that every single time somebody has hurled these charges against me, which they have done, it's proved to be nothing. And this is no different than that. You're listening to the latest from 24-7 News. Parts of the southeast and mid-Atlantic are under the gun for potential tornadoes today. One day after Twister slammed the Gulf Coast states, at least three people have died. Cincinnati police are on high alert after hackers from the group Anonymous published the personal information of 50 cops to protest a police shooting last week. Hamilton County Sheriff's Captain Michael Hartzler saying he's quite worried. It's very alarming. Um, it's happened uh, all across the country, and but to happen here at home, it's a very alarming. That from Fox and Friends. The Justice Department wants Apple's help in unlocking at least nine iPhones in their criminal investigations. That includes the San Bernardino mass shooting. Facelift is offering a facelift to its iconic light button. As you're scrolling through newsfeed, if you want to react to something, then all you need to do is press and hold on the like button, and then you will see a um, menu appear or a dock appear with all of the different reactions. The five new reactions include love and sad. So, like away, I'm Mark Woolsey. It's time for your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. In Corona, there's stop-and-go traffic on the 91 westbound between McKinley Street and Green River Road. The 71 South is busy between Euclid Avenue and the 91. In Ontario, slow traffic on the 60 westbound between Archibald Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 10 West is slow from slow and go from Millican Avenue to the 57. The 210 West is busy between Haven Avenue and Foothill Boulevard. And finally, in Moreno Valley, slow traffic on the 215 northbound between Alessandro Boulevard and University Avenue. The 215 South is slow and go from Lacadena to Columbia. The 60 West is busy between Day Street and the 215. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 Traffic Report. I'm Aaron Brinker. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard for this morning. We've got sunny skies with a high near 82, mostly clear tonight with a low near 51. Thursday, sunny with a high near 83. Thursday night, mostly clear, low near 51. Once again, Friday, sunny with a high near 84. Friday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Saturday, sunny and cooler with a high near 79. Saturday night, mostly clear, low near 53. Sunday, sunny with a high near 80. Sunday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Monday, sunny and 80 once again. Monday night, mostly clear, low near 54. Tuesday, sunny, warming up to a high near 86. That's your the forecast for this hour from KCAA 106.5 FM and 1050 AM, the stations that leave no listener behind. KCAA Radio, Loma Linda, where no listener is ever left behind. Welcome back. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. Um, we've talked about Apple, and it'll be it'll be interesting to watch. But I want people to go on our social media and to and let us know what they think. So we'll be posting, uh, you know, kind of a poll. What do you think about Apple? And uh, yeah. And because I, I want to know what people or our listeners think and what people in the Inland Empire think. Yeah. Because the, the terrorist attack did happen here. It happened here in San Bernardino. So... You know, um, a different kind of terrorist attack. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trump's third straight win has rivals looking for answers. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. And I, I, am a, I consider myself a conservative Christian, although there are people who are more conservative than I am. But um, uh, I don't understand why, con- why conserv- self-proclaimed conservative Christians are voting for Trump, and they are. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't understand... I don't understand it, the Trump phenomenon. I don't either. The, the man's an idiot, and I just, uh, 
I find myself just getting angry and sad as I watch him sort of advancing. Um, we had so many highly qualified, good candidates in this race, and the people that they've the people have chosen to rally around a small group, a small but vocal group, have chosen to rally around Trump, and he will lose in a general election. Um, and I don't, I don't, still don't believe that it's inevitable that he's going to get the nomination. I think that um, the, the way the the way it's set up, especially with all the these uh, proportional uh, races early on, that the delegates going to get spread out uh, amongst all these different candidates, and that. Uh, but you know, once Super Tuesday hits. Yeah, Super Tuesday, again, they're all proportional. All those states are proportional, and Trump may win in, in many of those states and have more delegates than the others, but he's not going to be able to get enough. When you've got that many people in the field and they're all splitting and taking delegates, he can't get to the 50% that he's going to need to win the, the nomination. Yes, but once and the so winner-take-all states start voting. But I don't think he's going to win in the winner-take-all states. I think a lot of—if if, if Rubio wins Florida, if—, if um, uh, uh, Kasich wins Ohio. But isn't if, Trump doing better than Kasich in Ohio? There was one poll that just showed him a little bit ahead. I don't believe it's actually going to, that he, that it's going to hold. I think Kasich wins Ohio. I think, um, you know, I, I really believe that if we can win some of those big states, all I got to do is deny him a couple of them. He can't get to the 50%, and then we get to a brokered convention, and I think in, a, in, in that situation, Trump loses. Um, and so I, I just, I cannot, in my mind, allow myself to think that this guy is going to be the Republican nominee. It's bad for the party. It's bad for the country. Um, and we've got so many better options. And so I'm, you know. He will say anything to anyone. Yeah. He has no, and we talked about Ronald Reagan being Teflon. We talked about Bill Clinton being Teflon. Donald Trump is completely Teflon. On the same day, he can give contradictory statements to two different audiences, and nobody calls him on it. Yeah. Or if they do call him on it, people blow off the 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 people bringing it up. They'll be like, oh, that's just whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know, it doesn't and, make and, any sense to me. And he says me. the dumbest things, and people hold it up and say, oh, it's, you know, see, he's not politically correct. Isn't that great? Political correctness is what's ruining the country. You know, political correctness has, has come to mean anything for right. these people. Um, I'm sorry. I don't want someone in charge of our country who says stupid stuff. You know? No. Well, like like <laughs> we just heard on the news, you know, I love the uneducated or whatever he said. Yes. You know, it's like, come on. Really? Yes. Come on, Trump. Yes. You know, he just, he just, he has no filter. Yeah. He'll say whatever is in his head. And often that's stupid. Well, when you're dealing with global diplomacy, yeah. you can't do that, you yeah. know? With his, I'll build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. Yeah, and and the Democrats are laughing and loving it because they know that he's a guaranteed win for the Democrats. And there's just too much on the line, you know, especially with this this uh, uh, Supreme Court seat that's now open. And my hope is is that that actually will sober the Republican electorate, that people will now get very serious about this and make sure that we get someone who's not Trump to to be our nominee because we need someone who can win in November so that we have a chance of of appointing the next Supreme Court seat. Otherwise, the Supreme Court flips, and we're going to see a whole bunch of really bad things happen. But but they're going to—they think that he would app uh, uh, appoint the best Supreme Court justice. Now, he's already said he would probably appoint his sister, who is— just as liberal as uh, Elena Kagan yeah. and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. And if you're a conservative, that's not what you want. And appointing a family member? My God. Yeah. That's where, nepotism. Where, where, where do we live? What country is this? That's not my country. Yeah. You know? I, I just, I can't believe it. No. I can't believe it. So I, I honestly, and to, you and I differ on this one, I think that the, the, the candidates, the Republican candidates who have, have low delegate counts need to drop. It's time. They need to go. And get behind the ones with the higher delegate counts. Um, I think that the the only candidate on the, uh, the up there who would give uh, who scare the Democrats mm -hmm. is Marco Rubio. I disagree. I think that that um, in order to to get to a brokered convention, you have to keep some of these guys in. And I think that Kasich has got the best chance to win Ohio, uh, possibly Michigan, and a couple other uh, states where he has a stronger appeal. I think Rubio's got an appeal in certain parts of the country. That, that he'll get some votes. I think the same of Cruz. And if, if they all got out, the, the, the analysis that I've read is as each guy gets out, yes, uh, it helps them a little bit, but it actually in, in many ways helps Trump more because he'll peel off even more support. And, and so I don't think you want a, a heads-up race with Trump. I think what you want is each of these guys sort of focusing on the areas where they can do well 
and, and letting these other guys run free in these other areas and, and taking some of these big states out of the pocket of Trump, picking his pocket. You're, you have faith that some of these big states will not go to Trump. I do. I, I do not. I do. I think Kasich can definitely win Ohio. Guarantee it. But he, we talked about the poll. There was a poll just yeah. recently that he wasn't in, ahead in Ohio. Yeah. His own state. It I, should be decisive in Ohio. Yeah, I get it. The polling has been all over the place. I don't care about the polling. Trust me, Kasich's going to win Ohio. Rubio will win Florida. Uh, uh, Cruz is going to win Texas. Those are big states, going to take a lot of delegates away and make it impossible for Trump to get the nomination. But if you, if you consolidate them, then Trump wins in each of those states, and he gets this thing. I don't know that that's true. I think it is true. I think that, 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 that if, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, well, obviously we're going to have to sit back and watch. I just, this, is, this is the year that the Republican Party lost its mind. Yeah, because I agree. Because Donald Trump has never been a conservative, and, and never in his life, and he's not one now. And what's amazing to me is because Donald Trump is so crazy, we're not talking about just how crazy the two Democratic candidates are, because they've got two lousy candidates, too. The Democrats are not happy about their candidates. Turnout is down. Um, it, you know, uh, they've got a socialist running and a woman that no one trusts. You know? Yes. And in and, and, and a normal search situation, we're talking about, oh, how horrible it is for them because we would be putting forward a normal Republican candidate and these guys would be laughed at and be like, oh, my God, the Democrats are going to lose badly because they couldn't find a, a good candidate. And their bench has been depleted and they've got nothing in the wings to come up and help them at any point in the future. And isn't this the end of the Democratic Party? But instead, they're talking about, oh, isn't this the end of the Republican Party? I, it's the end of sanity. Is what it is. <laughs> it really is. Well, I have, there's, you know, I, I, with the way Donald Trump has talked about, uh, like he talked about Vladimir Putin, mm -hmm. and people are like, oh, he was just this or that. No, he said that at least Putin was a strong leader, despite the fact that Putin had um, uh, uh, journalists killed who didn't agree with his, his party and his, and his views. Yeah. And, you know, well, we've done that too, is what Trump said. And, you know, at, you know, at least he's a strong leader. Oh, my God. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Are we about to elect a despot? Yeah. He scares the heck out of me. Yeah. You know, it's, we don't, we are, are as a matter of fact, we have had an imperial presidency. We had one with Bush. We have one with, um, uh, Obama. with Obama. And, and what that means is that the executive, the executive branch needs to, to to be toned down, not built up. Yeah. And, you know, during the Clinton administration, we really had more of an imperial legislative yeah. branch. Um, but, you know, and it swings back and forth. But if we put a totalitarian in there, oh, we, my gosh. Yeah, we, we've, we've, got a ba we've got a balance of power. We've got a uh, checks and balances system uh, for a reason. Yes. For a reason. You know, and I know a lot of my, my liberal friends are, are flaming mad because of the Supreme Court pick and Mitch McConnell saying that we're not going to nominate anybody. But I view that as, a, as, an, as an extreme use, but a, a legitimate use of the balance of power, the checks and, checks and balances. And, you know, it, it's in, in large response to the executive overreach of Obama that they're not going to let him have this pick. And it also makes this election so much more meaningful. It really requires us now to make sure that both ca both sides put forward the most serious candidates because that person is going to get to choose the next Supreme Court justice that will flip could potentially flip the balance of the court and ch and change the direction of this country for the next 30, 40 years. Yes. I, this is a big deal. It is a big deal. And we're watching uh, the Apprentice uh, election version, Yeah, which is... Unbelievable. So let's take a break at 644. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. We'll be right back. Broadcasting more local radio programs than any other station in California. We are KCAA. Join Sewing Seats for Life on Monday, Leap Year Day, February 29th, for the 7th Annual Celebrity Golf Tournament to Fight Hunger. This year, the event will take place at the beautiful Glendora Country Club. Registration starts at 9 a.m. The shotgun start is at 10. For more information or to register, please call 909-392-5777. 909-392-5777. This is Joe Lyons. I hope to see you at the Sewing Seats Leap Day Golf Tournament. 
What have I learned so far? I've learned that dropping out of high school was my decision. But as a single mom, that decision affected more than just me. To set an example, I had to be the example. I found a free high school diploma program at Learn for Life that fits around my busy life. I have a team of teachers, tutors, and counselors that really care. I learn at my pace in an environment that is safe and comfortable. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one -on -one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Enroll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Are you particular about the vitamins and supplements you take? Have you found that the big chain stores simply don't have what you need? Then you should know about the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. You'll find rock bottom prices on gourmet top quality vitamins and mineral supplements at the Vitamin Center. Get 30% off on all supplements and homeopathic products. All not just selected merchandise. In addition, you'll find 30% off on all cosmetics, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, makeup, hair coloring, and lip gloss. And all tea products are discounted 20%. Why go anywhere else? See for yourself at the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills or check out the savings and place your order online. VitaminCenterAgoraHills.com Start saving by getting what you need from the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. And tell a friend that the Vitamin Center ships nationwide. Call 818-707-0005. That's 818-707-0005. The Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. It's time for the KCAA Community Calendar, brought to you exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools. The clear mission of Learn for Life is to motivate and mentor students who have dropped out of school and provide them with the personalized education and technical training necessary to advance their lives. Here's a look at the KCAA community calendar. I'm Successful Brim. Be sure to check out Redlands Market Night, Thursday from 6 till 9 p.m. Established in 1988, Redlands Market Night has established itself as one of the most successful certified farmer's markets in Southern California. Vendors vie to participate in the event that has attracted thousands of weekly visitors since its inception. Visit certified farmers, 20 different food vendors, and over 100 handcrafters, merchants, and business promoters. Visitors are welcomed into an inviting atmosphere complete with lighted trees, brick sidewalks, historic buildings, and a great musical entertainment at First East State Street in Redlands. Crowds are pleasantly surrounded by over 150 food and merchandise booths, not to mention the downtown shopkeepers every Thursday night. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! While you're there, learn about the healing benefits of live circus sustenance with their 100% raw and vegan eats and treats. You can also participate as a vendor by contacting Heather Smith at Redlands Market Night at cityofretlands.org. Again, Redlands Market Night at cityofretlands.org. And that's a look at the KCAA Community Calendar. The KCAA Community Calendar is presented exclusively by Learn for Life, a growing network of public charter schools where students can complete their education on a part time basis. To find a resource center nearest you, call 1-877-360-LEARN or visit Learn for Life online at learn4life.org. For more local radio every day, listen to KCAA. Welcome back. I'm Erin Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on The Brink, the morning show on KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5. Uh, this is an interesting story in Yahoo Health. Uh, and we had a conversation this morning uh, about a similar topic. Yeah. Um, th about, you know, women and family roles and, and you know, what people should be doing and, and all of that. There was a poll that came out that said that, that men create eight hours of... It was seven hours. Seven hours. Sorry, I exaggerated. Seven hours of extra homework for their wives. Housework. How, did I say homework? You said homework. Homework. Extra housework for their wives. Homework is something totally different. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I, I think it's bunk. Yeah, I, I do too. But um, this was there was a study done, and that, we're not going to talk too much about that one. But there's an interesting article in Yahoo Health about a woman who says that she's she judged herself. She judges herself uh, for being a stay at home mom. Yeah. So uh, she this is from Redbook actually, and it's on Yahoo Health. Um, she says she's never been much of a ma- maternal type. Uh, when uh, and I'll read from this. When I was in the first grade, it was a it was the height of Cabbage Patch Kids mania. They were everywhere, and they were impossible to get. I hated Cabbage Patch Kids. And uh, with a passion, most kids reserve for, well, cabbage. Why would I want to mother a creepy doll uh, when I could read or build block towers? So that's that's the kid she was. She, did, she didn't give much mothering much thought until uh, as she progressed through college and then law school and then eventually moved to New York City to practice in an affluent law firm. Uh, my head would ache, she said, from long hours at the computer. My stomach would rebel from sugar-fueled attempts to stay awake during document reviews. Even my soul ached from time to time. But my ovaries, yeah, they never gave a ping. So nobody is as surprised as I am now that I'm a stay-at-home mother to three children. Uh, my transition away from the workforce was gradual. My husband and I moved to Portland, Oregon, largely because we realized that New York, uh, that New York and I were better off long distance. <laughs> Um, in Portland, I got a job working at a legal nonprofit. My salary drop was proportionate to my increased love for the work. This is what I went to law school for. I thought I was making a difference. Then I got pregnant. And I remember towards the end of the pregnancy when worries about labor became all con- all consuming. Well, intentioned friends would say to me, but then it'll be all over and you'll have a baby. The thought of having the baby was almost as terrifying as the labor itself. In retrospect, I wish I'd actually spent a little more time with those Cabbage Patch kids. <laughs> Um, but then as my son was born, he was perfect. After my 12-week maternity leave ended, I spent the first days Googling quitting immediately after maternity leave while dabbing my way through a box of tissues. I didn't quit then. I gave it time, and it got better. It wasn't perfect, but it was better. Then I got pregnant again and again. With each child, my leaves got longer. My hours got sh- shorter, first to 80%, then 60 then 40 Then I got to the point where I was commuting more than working, and uh, uh, then I spent more days uh, on daycare than I was earning. And then she decided to stop. Yeah. And decided to stay home. And uh, she said that she, her mother worked. She remember going to her office and being fascinated, smiling through a frame on her desk and drawing, uh, smiling at her through a frame on her desk and drawing pictures for the for that she would hang on her wall. Um, but would her own children ever get to see her as someone who's lived in this other world? And. Uh, this is a this is a fight, and the, and the reason yeah. why I'm reading this, and I won't read the whole thing. You can check it out on Yahoo Health. The reason why I'm reading this is that every woman goes through this, yeah. You know, because most of us work before we get pregnant. I mean, there's a very few uh, number of women who stay home uh, and are homemakers when there are no children in the house, yeah. Um, but our we've been told our whole lives. I mean, you know, I I I was born in. I'll tell you how old I am. I'm 45. So, um, uh, born in 1970. My I have my birthday coming up. Um. And this whole time, it's been about career women. You, you know, you want to be out there. You want to have your own money. You want to be, you know, powerful, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. and also the needs, you know, the economy's changed. So a lot of families, they work because they have to. The women yep. work because they have to. But if you're given that choice and you can stay home, I think a lot of women would. A lot of women would. Yeah. You know, instead of going out and getting the job, they would they would spend the time with their kids. Because I remember that first day I went back to work. And you were home. Mm-hmm. And I cried. I cried, I cried, I cried. Yeah. You know, every family, I think, goes through this process very differently. It's a very personal thing, and it kind of, de- it's determined by sort of what your background is and sort of what, what's going on in your own personal life and relationship at that time. For us, it made more sense when our son was born, our first child, for me to stay at home. Um, I had actually just made a, a career transition, uh, left a job and gone back to school to become a teacher. And so I was able to be home during the day and do classes in, at night and then occasionally work on nights and weekends when, when you were uh, home. And and so f- at least for the first seven months after our son was born, I was the, the primary caregiver, which was bizarre for me. I mean, I never envisioned myself being, you know, uh, a stay-at-home dad, you know. And it, it, society sends all kinds of interesting messages to men who do that. I mean, I remember people talking about me babysitting my own child. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the babysitter. I'm the dad, you know? Um, and I also remember getting all kinds of kudos and pats on the back for doing things that... You You're just, like, this is my kid. Yeah, that you just normally do. Oh, you changed a diaper. Oh, I can't He changed a diaper. Oh, it's like, you know, they're going to bow down to you like you've done some great thing. It's like, uh, it needed to be changed. 
you know. It, yes. But but if you had done it, it, it would have been like, well, well, why'd you give up your career? Yeah. That I mean, that's the the pressure for the women. Yeah. Um. You know the the you know why would you give up your career? You know, there's you know do, don't you yeah. wish you were working? You know. And then, and then we flipped it though. When our daughter was born, it made more sense then for you to to stay at home, and so you quit your job and you created a home business, a home daycare. And so you weren't just taking care of our kids, but you were taking care of other people's kids as well. And, you know, and so and, and it was very stressful. I mean, you know, the, the, the financial strain of having just one person working was very hard on us. Um, the, the emotional strain that, that the, the pull, you know, I want to be with my kids, but the also you, you really missed the adult interaction. I mean, that was hard on you. You know, and it was um, it, it just it creates this weird dynamic. And so reading this story just sort of opens up a lot of questions for us about how society views people who make these choices. Well, and she she says uh, that she still judges herself. Yeah. Um, you know, she sees herself sweeping for the 14th time that day and think to herself, is this what did I go to law school for this? Yeah. Uh, then she sees her daughter bent over her latest Lego collection um, and wonder, am I setting the best example for her? You know, Um you know, and and it's. I think mommy guilt is innate. Yeah. Um. We we feel guilty over everything. You know. And but our society also blames us for everything. Yeah. You know. So if anything that happens to the child, well, it must be parenting. Um. Actually, Buzzfeed just put out a really funny video about the different types of moms. And they I had. Did it. you see that they had the earthy mom, and then they had the PTA mom, the PTA mom, and then the the uh, uh, expert mom or somebody, you know, yeah. the know-it-all mom or something. And I'm looking at these women going, yeah, I'm not any one of these women. And up runs this woman who's got, you know, vomit on her shirt and you know, chocolate on her shirt yeah. and, and her hair is all messed up and it was the hot mess mom. And I just <laughs> laughed and are laughed you, are and Are you laughed. the hot mess mom? I was, you know, we all are. <laughs> oh. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, we've made a lot of decisions in our life about that revolved around what was best for our kids, you know, and and me becoming a teacher in large part was a decision that was what's best for our kids. It's a it's a family centric job. We knew that it would give me weekends off. I would have vacations, you know, large times during the summer, and and that I could be with the kids and the family. And when you were doing your MBA program, it was perfect because I get off early enough as a teacher that I could be home and I'd have hours with the kids when you were at your classes. And you know, we we made decisions based on what's best for our kids. And every time we got some extra money, where do we spend it? On our the kids. kids. You know, we didn't take the elaborate vacations and go to buy all the nice stuff. It, it all got plowed into what's best for the kids. And our kids are doing really good because of it. And, you know, that's the payoff, right, at the end? Yeah, and I think that, you know, we, we, we need to be easier on ourselves. If a family has made a decision about how they want to prioritize their life, who in the heck are we to say, how, who the heck is anybody to say yeah. that they're doing it wrong? I, obviously, your mother is going to probably tell you her opinion. But other yeah. than your mother, nobody has the right to say anything. Yes. Are Be- you listening, Mom? <laughs> I meant you're the collective you're. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, we need, to, we need to lighten up. Parenting's hard. My phone's going to blow up in a minute with some texts from my mom. Because <laughs> she texts. No, I mean, parent, <laughs> it's... it's, it's, it's it, it, you find your you find your groove. You yeah. find your way. And I think we need to be more supportive of one another, whatever we choose. I agree. Actually, the last line of, of this is an interesting story because she's walking, uh, taking her child on a walk around the block, and she sees a woman uh, uh, looking at her across the way, and she starts judging herself, right? And in her head, she thinks the woman's going to say to her, well, wouldn't it be nice to spend a day in a sweatshirt looking at flowers and ooing at trucks? And, you know, and so she's building herself up for that. But when she walks past this woman, the woman says to her, enjoy this time. And she, of course, calls back that I do and that she does and that she will, you know. So we'll end with that at 659. I'm Aaron Brinker. And I'm Tobin Brinker. And we are on the Brink, the morning show on KCAA, AM 1050 and FM 106.5. Have a great day, everybody. You're listening to KCAA, Loma Linda, California. The best station in the nation. Chris Mauer, CNBC Business.
Business Radio. It looks like we're headed for another tough day on Wall Street as oil plunges 3% overnight. Crude falling after hopes of an oil production cut were dashed. Saudi Arabia's oil minister signaled Tuesday no cuts would happen to take care of the global supply glut. Lowe's out with its quarterly earnings results, the home improvement retailer matching Wall Street profit expectations. Revenue was slightly above forecasts and sales rose more than 5%. The company says it expects to add about 45 more stores this year. Target posting results that slightly missed the mark, but the retailer says it expects higher than expected 2016 earnings per share. Applications for home loans fell more than 4% in the latest week as rates edged up refinances, taking a breather after many weeks of strong activity. Chris Mauer, CNBC Business Radio. If you can't see the difference, why pay the difference? Switch to DISH and see what real value is. Call 877-319-6988. You can also save a bundle when you combine DishNet high-speed internet with your TV service. Call 877-319-6988. Programming starting as little as $29.99 plus access to thousands of movies and TV shows. Stream to your TV, smartphone, or tablet. Call 877-319-6988. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get DISH today. 7-Eleven now has these amazing new breakfast melts. Mm. And they're only $2.99. Thank you. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Our announcer decided to try the product. He was trying to explain 7-Eleven has two new melts that are toasted in-store. A bacon, egg, and cheese, and a sausage bacon and cheese. Mm. Both with thick-cut hickory-smoked bacon and aged cheddar cheese served on an artisan ciabatta roll for only $2.99. Only at 7-Eleven. Yeah, only at 7-Eleven. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard for this morning. We've got sunny skies with a high near 82. Mostly clear tonight with a low near 51. Thursday, sunny with a high near 83. Thursday night, mostly clear, low near 51. Once again, Friday, sunny with a high near 84. Friday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Saturday, sunny and cooler with a high near 79. Saturday night, mostly clear, low near 53. Sunday, sunny with a high near 80. Sunday night, mostly clear, low near 52. Monday, sunny and 80 once again. Monday night, mostly clear, low near 54. Tuesday, sunny, warming up to a high near 86. That's your weather forecast for this hour from KCAA 106.5 FM and 1050 AM, the stations that leave no listener behind. KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. In Corona, we have stop and go traffic on the 91 westbound between McKinley Street and Green River Road. The 71 South is busy between Pine Avenue and the 91. In Claremont, there's an accident. The shoulder is blocked on the 210 westbound at Baseline Road. In Ontario, slow traffic on the 60 westbound between Archibald Avenue and the 57 Orange Freeway. The 10 West is slow and go from Milliken to the 57. The 210 West is busy between Haven Avenue and Foothill Boulevard. In Moreno Valley, slow traffic on the 215 northbound between Alessandro Boulevard and University Avenue. The 215 South is slow and go from La Cadena to Columbia. The 60 West is busy between Heacock and the 215. This has been your KCAA AM 1050 and FM 106.5 traffic report. I'm Aaron Brinker. California headline news. Demonstrations throughout the state and the country today, mostly from those supporting Apple in its quest to keep the government from forcing it to hack into the iPhone of one of the San Bernardino shooters. This goes far beyond this single case or this single phone. And in fact, they're actually asking Apple to do something that would put millions of people's safety and security at risk. Evan Greer, campaign director of Fight for the Future, families of the victims of the San Bernardino terror attack are filing a legal brief in support to the government's attempts to get information off the phone. Chief of the San Francisco Police Department says they'll be more open about officer-involved shootings in the future. In meeting with the community, they, they want an explanation every time an officer points their firearm, and they're going to get it. Chief Greg Sir at a news conference unveiling changes on how the department's officers use deadly force. Changes prompted by the controversial shooting death of Mario Woods in December. Geico weather, partly cloudy, warm conditions across the state. Near 70 in the Bay Area, 80 in L.A. Jeff Scott, California News. 
Want clearer skin? For just $19.95, get Proactive and a rotating deep cleansing brush, a $45 value free. Get clear and stay clear or your money back. Try Proactive. Call 1-800-644-5944. one 644 5944 If your computer is running slow, go to MyCleanPC.com and get a free computer diagnosis. In minutes, you can activate MyCleanPC software to clean out the junk that may be slowing down your computer. Increase your computer speed today with MyCleanPC.com. That's MyCleanPC.com. The kitchen, that's home. I know that's like my grandma cooked, my mom cooked. I cook. Chocolate bread pudding and souffles and banana bread. I make a lot of banana bread because the baby likes bananas. So we always have bananas in the house. <laughs> home means something different to everyone. With millions of homes for sale or rent on Zillow, whatever home means to you, Zillow can help you find it. Thursday nights at 8, tune into Cali's best radio show with Lady Impress on 106.5 FM and 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Psst. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you know where you are? Well, you've done it now. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station. So expect the unexpected. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Stephanie Miller Show. I'm walking on 